Bruce Lawn. Comedian Patton Oswald issued an apology for taking a picture with Dave Chappelle on New Year's Eve after he performed at Dave Chappelle's stadium show. And they went after him. They, t- they said he was enabling somebody that was anti-LGBTQ, all kinds of wild stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about on this video. I got a Bible verse to glue this all together that I think will challenge us. But before we get there, guys, my name is Bruce Lawn. If you check out the links in the description, we have a free how to study the Bible course and a free master my habits course that I put together with my Christian therapist, Dr. Rudy. You guys are going to love it. If you're looking to form new habits in a new year, check out the freedom forming habits or go to mastermyhabits.com. All right. So Patton Oswalt is a comedian. Apparently him and Dave Chappelle have been friends for over 30 years. He posted an innocent photo from New Year's Eve and they went wild on him. By they, I mean the mob online, the comment section, forcing him to issue an apology about it. What's the background issue here? Well, Dave Chappelle has apparently been, quote unquote, canceled by folks from the alphabet community for his special. And therefore, anyone who affiliates with him is also apparently canceled. I don't understand how this thinking works. I don't understand how if you are a quote-unquote ally to a specific community. And let's just say Dave Chappelle is an error, hypothetically, which I don't think he is. But let's just say he is. You taking a picture with him somehow gets you dismissed as enabling, harboring a terrorist of sorts. And in his apology, uh, this photo is so cringe, by the way. He's sitting there thinking of something to say. I don't know what's happening in this photo, but he says, I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time this year. We've known each other uh, since we were teens. He's a fellow comedian, the funniest I've met. I wanted to post a pic on IG, story about it, so I did. The friend is Dave Chappelle, 34 years we've been friends. He's refocused and refined ideas a lot of us took and settled about race and history. And then he says, we've done bad and good gigs, open mics, but we also 100% disagree about... T-R-A-N-S, rights and representation. I support these people's rights, anyone's rights, to live safely in the world as their fullest selves. For all things he's helped me evolve on, I'll always disagree where he stands now on these issues, but I also don't believe a seeker like him is done evolving or learning. You know someone that long sees a struggle and changes, it's impossible to cut off, impossible not to be hopeful, and open cheer men. So, he goes on and on. This is a pretty long, uh, pretty long apology. Basically, this is Dave and his position with turfs and this whole bit. Okay, folks from this community have gone far off the deep end. And this is what I mean. Affiliating, having friends who you disagree with should be, ready for it? Normal. If you take a picture with someone if your acquaintance is friends friendly with someone, that doesn't mean you endorse and believe everything they've ever said and or believe. I'm going to tell you the root of it in terms of where this come from, comes from in a second. But I just want to be make one thing clear. When we look at the life of Jesus, we repeatedly see Jesus friends with people of questionable reputation. Friends with people who are problematic to say the least, to the point where he is called a friend of sinners, right? I'm going to pull this up to you. This is uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 16 through 19. He says, but to what shall I compare this generation? This is Jesus replying to the Pharisees. He says, but what, what shall I call this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling their playmates. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a, uh, I don't know how you say that word, and you did not mourn. For John, this is Jesus responding, for John, came neither eating nor drinking, and they said he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a, and, a, and a drunk, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is justified by her children. The, the whole point of the good news is 2 Corinthians, and this is how Paul defines it in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us unto himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And this is this is the crux. This is one verse. Define the entire good news of Jesus. That is, in Christ, Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. God reconciles a people 
who are rebellious back onto himself. God is a friend of sinners. Jesus is a friend of sinners. Jesus is engaging with people that were dismissed and discarded as sinners and tax collectors who, who were, you know, extorted their own people at the time. Instead of discarding those people, he pressed into relationship with them, right? So this is the example in scripture, right? Jesus being around, affiliating, hanging out with, People who were sinners, people he disagreed with in their behavior. So much so that Christians have came up with this phrase that's lately been challenged. Okay, and I'm going to get to the root of this. So just watch till the end. I'm going to get to the root of where this type of thinking comes from. The, the, the phrase goes, love the sinner, hate the sin. We're all image bearers of God. We're all created in the image of God. We all have value. We know we're all sinners, so on and so forth. So we are to love the sinner, hate the sin. But no! Within Christendom, there's a group that took a verse and formed some theology that's enabled them to not have to love the sinner because they pulled a verse out of Psalm chapter 5. Check this verse out. It's an interesting verse. Psalm chapter 5, it says, For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. Mm. And I've heard... A lot of credible Bible preachers say, love the sinner, hate the sin. Psalm 5.5 5 says God hates the sinner, right? And I go, interesting. Here's the part that I think is telling about this. Oftentimes, folks from this camp, charismatics, people that have wonky theology, you guys use descriptive passages in scripture to create your theology. They're always kind of like dunking on charismatics and like, you can't read Acts and form theology from Acts. That's descriptive. You can't read um, um, the Gospels and form theology from that. That's descriptive, right? And yet they form entire theology about God hating sinners from the Psalms. This is poetry, if, if we're talking descriptive versus prescriptive passages, this is David going through it, writing stuff. And even if you read this verse for what it says, it says, you hate all evil doers. And any other translation that I've seen is it always about the doing of the evil. So God hates the, the, those who practice wickedness, do evil. He doesn't hate people. Why am I talking about this? Because when you view the world as there are certain people that are irredeemable, that, that, that are completely far gone, and, and, and it's so much so that God hates them, then you revert back into a black and white, binary, good guys, bad guys way of thinking, okay? And this is dangerous. And so what are we seeing with regards to cancel culture? What are we seeing with regards to the stuff in the world with folks from the far left and the alphabet community? We're seeing a new dogma. This is a new religion. This is a new black and white, us versus them, good guys and bad guys way of thinking. Just borrowed it from fundamentalist Christians, right? And by fundamentalist Christians, I don't mean Christians that hold to certain fundamentals of the Bible. I mean Christians that see every issue under the sun as black and white and that, that, that literally think God hates certain people because of one verse in Psalms. And then they create entire theology, which is a poet poetry book. Right? Psalms about is poetry. That's that's not theology, but either way, I think this is extremely problematic and it and it ignores all the other passages of God's heart for people. I'll show you another one. This is first Timothy chapter two. And there's even a group of folks that have changed the meaning of this. Check this out. First Timothy chapter two. This says, Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Paul is saying, hey, pray for your leaders. Pray for men. Pray for everybody. Pray for people in authority. Okay? And then he says, uh, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. And then check this out. Here's some theology for you. Who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I'm speaking the truth in Christ and not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So here... We see Paul saying, hey, pray for everybody. And by the way, 
it's God's desire that all people would be saved. That that is God's desire, right? And he's saying, and this is this is the good news, right? For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom. He's going right into the gospel. He's going right into the gospel. So when we look at this, folks who take a picture with Dave Chappelle, they're bad. Christians would do this to me, by the way. I told a story of me meeting Jay-Z. And I told a story in the backstory, and I did a video on this, backstory of Jay-Z and Christianity. And people were like, well, instantly, there's certain Christians that will instantly dismiss you for even trying to humanize somebody. And, and, and best believe if I take a picture with Jay-Z, there's certain Christians that will lose it. it. What is it? It's the same thing. It's the same dogmatic, fundamentalist, radical thinking that creates good guys and bad guys. It creates people who are uh, in positions of, 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 of more righteousness because of fill in the blank, right theology, doing the right things, right, so on and so forth, and bad guys, people who don't got it right, who don't believe the right things. And, and, and if you even associate with someone from the out group, then goodness gracious, you are in trouble. But here's the issue, friends, is if we look at the scriptures and we look at the totality of scripture and, and, and we look at Romans as there's none righteous, no, not one, that there are no good guys and bad guys, that there's just humanity and Jesus. And anyone who understands the gospel and understands how offensive your sin is, regardless of how big or small, understands how massive the sacrifice of Jesus is, and it should humble you and make you tremble, not reinforce this notion of good guys and bad guys. And so what are we seeing with the Dave Chappelle thing? It's back to good guys and bad guys. There's those of us that are hyper woke and we have all the answers. And if you don't believe in our pronouns or what have you, then you're out. It's the same thing in religion. If you don't have all the answers and if you don't believe what we believe and you don't, and you're not against what we're against, then you're out. Jesus comes and says, hey, I come on a rescue mission. You fools are all far gone. You're all jacked up. So I'm going to live the life you could live, die to death you should have died. And once you realize the gravity of the sacrifice on the cross, it should humble you. It should make you meek. It shouldn't boast you and make you proud and arrogant. Regardless on what someone's preferences is, regardless on what someone's background is, regardless on what someone's sin is, the only difference between me and them is that I place my faith in Jesus, which is by grace through faith I've been saved. That's it. That's the only difference. Just know that there's no good guys or bad guys. This entire thing with Dave Chappelle is goofy. It's wonky. I, some would even go as far as to say as the world learned cancel culture from the church. And this idea that if you're affiliated with someone, that if you stand next to someone, that if you take a picture with someone, that you're, if you're friends with someone, that you're endorsing all of their views is a radical dogmatic view of the world that's unhelpful. It's not reflective of any type of virtue or values, and it's, and, it's, and it's harmful. Thinking God hates certain people is that when that is your driving worldview, or that's somewhere in your worldview, what it does is it decreases the greatest commandment of all, which is to love God with all your heart, all your mind, and your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then it allows you to be driven by something other than love and compassion in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love. And then you start saying, love is just being truthful and being harsh and being honest and being blunt. It's because you're seeing the world in good guys and bad guys, and then you're more likely to be flippant. You're more likely to be disrespectful. You're more likely to not believe the best about people's motives, even when you disagree with their positions. And unfortunately, that is what we're seeing all over culture. That is what we're seeing from some of the far left uh, alphabet activism. And that is obviously what we've seen from radical fundamentalism for years. And it's unfortunate. And so be mindful when you start thinking and viewing the world as good guys and bad guys. There's no good guys and bad guys. There's one good guy. His name is Jesus. And the rest of us are in need of a savior. So hopefully that's helpful. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Yo, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Check out the links in the description for some free resources, including a free Master My Devo course to get you more clarity, context, consistency in your devotional time, and a free Master My Habits course that I just put together with my therapist, Dr. Rudy, as well as a free niche training if you're looking to get into the Christian creator space. And we have some amazing additional videos recommended from me and YouTube to you. All right, peace.